Hey everybody, let me tell you something, let me tell you something. My name is Donald Trump. I'm Donald Trump. I'm running for president. And don't you ever forget that. My rallies are the largest. I have the most supporters and I blow away all the other candidates because I'm Donald Trump. I'm the master of the entire universe. We just put that in your pipe and smoke it. I am going to win because I'm a winner. I, I love winning. I'm used to winning all the time. I'm, I will win. And I am in the uh, Progressive Discussions podcast, Mega Life 21 studio to visit these guys. And I'm here with Undercover Bob. Undercover Bob, how are you today? Okay. Donald Trump is speaking to you. I won't let you kiss my hand this time, but maybe the next time you'll have to kiss my feet. But I'll, I'll let you go this time. Let me tell you something. That Ted Cruz, he looks just like Grandpa Munster. Grandpa Munster with that pointy needle nose. That religious nut. Donald Trump is the master of the universe. Don't you ever forget it. And, uh, hey, who are those protesters? Get out of here. Get them out of here. I like to punch them right in the face. Get them out of here. We don't tolerate protesters in my rallies. Go on. Get out of here. Get them out. Get them out of here. Get them out of here. Hey, you. Get out of here, protester. I'll punch you right in the face. Get them out of here. Get them out of here. Oh. That Donald Trump, I tell you, that Donald Trump, by golly, he's he's a character. He's a character. But anyway, he had to leave. He had to go to lunch. Um, undercover Bob, how are you? Okay. Uh, good. Say hi to your fans out there. Hi, this is Undercover Bob. How's everybody doing? All right, hopefully good. I'm James P. Madonna. Welcome to the studio here. Uh, we are back with uh, the Renaissance Man Can Create and Undercover Bob. Uh, this is our second uh, video, our second visit. It's an unexpected visit this uh, fine Sunday afternoon. It is the end of March 2016, and uh, the weathermen, the weather people are full of shit, Undercover Bob. They predicted we were going to get a few inches of snow in our area here in northeastern New Jersey. And I don't see any snow at all. I see nothing but sunshine and clear skies. Yeah, I, 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 you know, undercover, Bob, I think being a weather person is the perfect job in the world. Because, you know, you dress up, you joke around, you smile a lot, and you could be wrong every time. Right. Oh, quite often these guys and these women are wrong and they just blame it on na nature, uh, 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 National Weather Bureau, they get their information. So what are they paid for, honestly? You know what I'm saying? Um, all right. Did you know, Undercover Bob, that the bacteria that causes body odor on humans, you know, mm -hmm. smelly armpits, is uh, which is called Brevi bacteria. Do you know this is the same ba bacteria used in making Limburger cheese in Germany? Now I know something. Isn't that amazing that the same bacteria that makes your armpits stink is made, is used in making Limburger cheese? How about that? Yeah. Now, the other day, being that we're having crazy climate change. The other day was cold, a few days ago, actually was cold. I made split pea soup with smoked pork cock, pork cock. Now, I have a problem with this ingredient because people have trouble pronouncing it. If I call it split pea soup with smoked pork cock or pig cock, pig hock, Say, say split pea soup, soup with smoked pork cock. Split pea soup with pork cock. It sounds obscene, doesn't it? A little bit. 
Now say split pea soup with smoked pigcock. Split pea soup with smoked pigcock. Now it sounds like you're talking about the pig's dick, right? I guess so. But it's not it's not cock, it's hock. But if you say if you put those words together, it sounds obscene. Yeah. So I don't know what to call it. Because, you know, people look at me and give me dirty looks when I mention it. I made a big pot of split pea soup with smoked pork cock. Pig cock, pork cock. Um, now, if you were, my question to you, Undercover Bob, uh, if you were having sex with a, a beautiful young uh, uh, swimsuit model, and uh, you were doing a 69 position, and she farted in your face. Would you continue to have sex with her, or would you like throw her out? Throw her out. Even if she's like a Sports Illustrated, beautiful young swimsuit model, you would still throw her out of the apartment. You would stop having sex if she oh, farted in your face. Possibly, I would. Yeah, like you were doing sixty-nine, not. Not 68, which is, uh, she does you and you. That's oh. miles per hour. Yeah, no, no, 68 would be, she does him and, 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 she, and he owes her one. That would be 68. But 69, so you, you would stop having sex regardless how beautiful she was. Yeah. If she farted in your face. Okay. Yeah. All right. Now, I have an, there's an observation that I have. And this observation is when I take a shower and let's say, I wash really good, and I even wash my asshole. Regardless how well I washed my body and my asshole, a few hours later, the asshole goes back to stinking like hell. Not the rest of the body. The armpits are fine. The crotch is fine. The balls are fine. You know, because I wash really good. Even though the balls do get sweaty underneath the balls, you know. You got to sometimes add some... Uh, Ooh, ping pong balls. Ping pong. Sometimes you got to add some, uh, you know, medicated powder, gold bond, whatever. Uh, oh, that's uh, Mr. Ken Create in the background. How you doing, Kenny? Yeah. Hey, hey, uh, yeah. James, I think you need a bar of soap in your mouth, man. No, no, no. This is reality. This is uh, this is real life. So what I'm trying to say is, it's bizarre that the asshole starts to stink in such a short amount of time after you wash it. You know, you go and touch it, you smell your finger, and it, it, it's gross. So, and I just soaked the hell out of it and rinsed the hell out of it a few hours earlier. So... You figure it out. I mean, I don't know. You have any explanation for such a phenomenon? Not really, except to say that those bacteria are stubborn. They must be very relentless, right? I would say. Very relentlessly stubborn. But anyway, I am going to um, depart momentarily. And... Um, from what I understand, the Renaissance man can create is going to join you. Okay, so stand right here, and in the next segment, you will be blessed <laughs> with the presence and 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 the talent and wit and intelligence of the one and only the Renaissance man can create, along with it could be undercover Bob or. It could be another visitor from the North Woods, uh, um, a, a creature that was a thought to uh, not exist, but I think this will prove that he exists. All right. Greetings, everyone. Greetings. We're back. I'm James P. Madonna. In, in the uh, Progressive Discussions uh, Mega Life uh, 21 and Mayhem Studios. And I'd like to introduce you to my uh, pet land shrimp. His name is Shrimpy. Say hi, Shrimpy. 
Hi, how are you? How's everybody? Uh, I'm okay. See, Shrimpy's not a shy shrimp. You know, he just, uh, he smells of ammonia a little bit. But then again, so does semen, you know, and the guy blows his load. But anyway, uh, uh, you know how it is with the shellfish. So, Shrimpy, uh, do you, uh, is it true that, uh, that shellfish, crust, uh, are you a crustacean, number one? Yeah, I'm a crustacean. Is it true that shellfish are high in cholesterol? They're full of shit. All the doctors are full of shit. Don't believe it. All right, Shrimpy says, uh, yeah, for those of you that don't believe in Shrimpy. Fuck these bastards if they don't believe I exist. I'm right here, you motherfuckers. All right. You understand that, you cocksuckers? Shrimpy is for real. All right. All right, Shrimpy. Um, oh, I forgot my lucky blackthorn shillelagh. Fuck your shillelagh. Stick it up your ass. I'm going to introduce can create the renaissance man. Kenny boy, come back, come over. Hey, come what's over, up there, man. Come Shrimpy. Hey, Ken, the renaissance man, huh? Where the fuck do you get that name from? Hey, be nice. Be nice to our special guest. Okay, I will. So, renaissance man. Uh, don't listen to Shrimpy's comments. Uh, he's a little constipated. His diet hasn't been is, uh, I've been feeding shrimpy shrimp, and he doesn't know it. You, what do you think, I'm a fucking cannibal? What the fuck are you feeding me shrimp for, you cocksucker? Don't worry, I'll, I'll put you on a normal diet. I just wanted a, I'm only kidding, I, I wasn't feeding you shrimp. Hey, it looks like a plastic ornament, man. What do you do, you put that on your, uh... Plastic ornament? Window. Who the fuck is this guy? Tell him to shut the fuck up. Or I'll crawl into his pants and, and, and bite off his fucking balls. Oh, Shrimpy, calm down, calm down. Uh, you know what? I'm putting you back in your back in your uh, in your watery, salty, briny cage. Your I mean your 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 aquarium rather. Oh, fuck the ball! Fuck all of this! All right, all right, Shrimpy. Shrimpy needs to bar soap in his mouth. All right, Shrimpy's going back in the in the salt water. Hey. Went back on your window. Hey, Shrimpy. Hold on, Shrimpy. Let, yeah, me, look at let me pick you up again, Shrimpy. When you go on a boardwalk in the Jersey, down the Jersey Shore, I notice the stores sell a lot of uh, what they call saltwater taffy. But when I read the ingredients, I never see salt, salt water, in, as one of the ingredients. Why the hell do they call it saltwater taffy? How the fuck do I know? Just because I'm from the ocean, you think I know? Everything you you people do? No, well, I it's I noticed there's a lot of fudge. What are you packed fudge? What are you gay? No, no fudge, the candy. You know they. Oh, it's got a sister fag. You know they you mix sugar and 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 cream cheese. Uh, uh, you know whatever, but there's no salt and salt water taffy. Just like there's no eggs and egg cream. Hey, put him in, in some bath water. He stinks, man. You know, uh, egg cream, uh, chocolate and vanilla egg cream, there's no eggs in it. Yeah, you're right. But, all right, salt water taffy, you have no idea. Oh, go fuck yourself. All right, you're going back in the water. You're going, going back to drown. Ground. Bury him. Well, he can't drown because he can breathe underwater. All right. Look, he's still kicking in, man, his legs. Yeah, I know. Well, he's, he's trying to swim to his favorite position, which is, uh, you know, uh, usually uh, with his face to the wall. Hopefully, his mouth will be full. Look, he's full of stress. Look at him. I know. He's stressed out. He's a stressed out shrimp. Cameroon. Is the, uh, uh, Cameroon is Spanish for shrimp. All right. You know what? What's no? I know. It <laughs> I know. I they could do better than that. What's no? Hey, what's up? New York, New Jersey, New Mexico. Hey, hey, what? No, nah, nah, we did. We heard that last time. So, uh, what's going on, Mr. Create? Yeah, I'm trying to get work here and there. Look, I'm, I'm doing... Here, here and there? There I'm, and here? I'm doing corny comedy skits with uh, my friend James here. All right. Uh, here and there? Here and there and everywhere. Yeah, you know what's, uh, you know what's funny? Speaking of what's up. Now, what's down? What's down? 
Your underpants is falling down. Well, that's what uh, what uh, uh, Bill Clinton said uh, when he uh, used to interview all the uh, interns and young ladies. He used to say, no, not. don't say what's up to me. It's what's down. Are you going to go down on me? But anyway, um, you know, when somebody greets you, they usually say, hey, how are you doing? How are you? What's up? Do they really want to know how you're doing? I don't think so. Because if you, if you told them how you're really doing, they'd walk away from you. No, they wouldn't walk away from you. What would happen was you would have things in common with them. And they'd be like, yeah, I like you. Yeah, so what? Your wife is going to stab you in the back too? Yeah, she did that three weeks ago to me. Well, that's if you have something in common with the person who says, hey, uh, man, hey, what's up? You do. Hey, what's up? But in a lot of cases, people like in business and uh, office, uh, caddy office women, they, they always say, how are you? What's up? What? You know what I hate? Like, in the dating uh, scene in America, like let's say dating, online dating, or if you meet somebody, yeah, that's exciting. You know it's you know it's oh pisses me off. Women always say the the second or third thing that they comes out of their mouth to a man is what do you do? Why does it? Why are they always trying to size up a man's income and job? You know you know what do you do? That's that's a very personal annoying. And somewhat yeah, rude question. Yeah, yeah, but see, you don't get it like the other guys out there. Okay, what happens is they're sizing you up to see your income because they want to burn you. They want to go out with you. All yeah. right? Take everything they possibly can take from you. They want you to entertain them. You mean. All right? And they get everything for free. And if they get pregnant, they got oh, you. Oh, you're done. They got you for 18 you're years, you're right? Done. They got you for 18 years. You're done. You know, and, and, oh, by the way, when you're taking them out, they order the apple martini that costs like almost 20 bucks. But when they go out with their girlfriends, they're probably ordering uh, beer or, or vodka and oranges. Absolutely. But when they go out with the man, oh, they want the fancy drinks, well, the apple martini. See, because, see, what they see is they see a guy coming along and he's like, da, de, da, de, da, de, da. And here's a sucker. Just, Hey, look at this guy. I can take this guy for everything he's got. You know why? He just wants to get in my pants. You know why? Like, oh, you do there, baby. You know why I think you hit the nail on the head? They know men are desperate to get in the in the woman's pantalones. Well, not only that, but then they want to talk to their friends and say, yeah. man, you see that hot one I'm going out with? And then all the friends look at it and say, wow, look, yeah, look at Larry, man. See the one he scored with? Man, I look up to yeah. Larry. Well, the, these guys are thirsty, and, and they're desperate, and they, they're desperate to get laid, and they make it bad for all the decent, nice, intelligent men out there. Yeah, so they, so, so they don't have the sex, okay? And then when it comes to the pay, the wife robs the pay. So who got paid? Yeah. Hey, I remember one time many years ago, remember the bodybuilder Lee Haney, Mr. Olympia? Lee Haney. Lee Haney won. Oh. Beep. Yeah, when he won one of his Mr. Olympias, and get this, on national TV. Yeah, uh, does, did he wear, like, Haney uh, underwear? Haney's underwear? No, no, he has nothing to do with that. But the, but the Baby Ruth candy bar was connected to Babe Ruth. Oh, man. Well, player. you know what? Haney. 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 Okay. Haney. His uncle was on... Green Acres. Green Acres. Yeah, but... They saw you to Brooklyn Bridge. Mr. Free. Haney was a black man. Uh, no. I, I mean, I, uh, Lee Haney was a black man. Mr. Haney was, was very pasty white. You know, now you got to make me think of that song. Green Acres is the place to be. Farm I'm on, I'm on living is the life for I'm me. On, on the Land spreading out so far. Yeah, and that's wide. it. Green Acres. Uh, get Manhattan the busiest country sign. That's Shut the fuck up over here. Oh, I'm sorry. We're keeping you awake. Uh, that was just nah, the shrimp's dead, man. What are you talking to the shrimp? That man? was just Bob ate the shrimp. That was just Bob. That was just shrimp. my crispy, crusty shrimp. Uh, anyway, the point is that Lee Haney's wife immediately rushed up on stage and grabbed the, the big check out of his hands and stormed off the stage like she was trying to make a point. 
And this is the point that a lot of American women, unfortunately, make. That they, I think they use a man's libido, uh, a man's uh, greater sex drive. They they play the gender card, so to speak, and they use it against him, so they can control the husband, the boyfriend, the fiance, the relationship, and they can control it like a prostitute. It, it, I mean, it is a form of prostitution. You know, when a woman dates somebody, you know, to get over on them, you know, money wise, it, it is a form. But anyway, I digress. Uh, this is a, it's supposed to be a light, funny show, and I digress. Well, what else is new? What's new? Oh, here I've we go. Doing, I've been doing some comedy, and I got a comedy skit. I'm going to be doing it in a couple of minutes. Okay. Are uh, you going to be doing it with... Uh, no, uh, I'm doing it solo. This is a solo. This is a solo skit. Yes. And then solo. you can introduce the, the gentleman... That is going to be joining. Yeah, he'll be flying by in about a couple minutes. In a couple minutes. But he might the... be flying by in his bed. Okay. His bed. Or he's got a jet. I don't know, man. This is this is not a big studio. his brother is Brett. Brett? The, 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 this uh, studio is not big enough for uh, to accommodate a... It's not a there's no heliport or or uh, private jet. Or he, might, or he might be he might be riding shrimpy. He might be right. Well, I don't think Shrimpy can fly. It's, it's, it's not Mothra, you know, from the Godzilla movie. I don't think Shrimpy can fly, but yeah, Shrimpy can uh, annoy people. Shrimpy is very annoying. I think Shrimpy has a Napoleonic complex, you know, anything small, you know, like a Chihuahua, you know, small dogs. They never shut the hell up. You know, short people, you know, they, they're obnoxious, you know. What the you fuck could, are you talking about up yeah, there? You yeah. could bring shrimpy anywhere, okay? Shrimpy can go on your forehead. He can go on your hat. Shrimpy reminds me. stick to your glasses. Shrimpy reminds me of Plankton from the SpongeBob SquarePants cartoon. You know, small and, ob and obnoxious. You know, I like that guy. Plankton, I think he's a good guy. Yeah, because he's tiny like you and annoying and obnoxious. Anyway, take it away. Oh, boy, I tell you, oh. that guy James, he needs a nice bar of soap in his mouth, doesn't he there? I'll say. Who's that guy over there? You know who that guy is over there? James, you know who he is? Um, I don't know, Undercover Bob. Undercover Bob? Is nah. that him? No. Bob's under the covers right now. He's getting ready. What, he's playing with himself? Okay, so anyway. Oh, sit down, Bob. You got some space. Give the man some space, man. Hold off, man. There are a couple of minutes. Well, anyway, I'm from Patterson, New Jersey. Whoa, that guy's from Patterson, man. You know, when I used to go to clubs, I used to talk to people, even girls. I used to meet girls, and they used to tell me, oh, I'm from Midland Park, or I'm from Verona, or I'm from Paramus. And they used to say from, to me, they were like, where are you from? I was like, oh, I'm from Patterson. They are like, lock the doors, man. Put the windows up. They look at me like I'm going to rape them or not, I'm going to shoot them. No, the section I'm from from Patterson, we call it Hillcrest. It's a nice section. It's close to Total. So I'm not in the heated battle. I'm not in the hood. I'm not in the ghetto. I'm in a pretty good section. But anyway, there's a park down by my house, and we got the river here. We got the Passaic River. So one time I went down there, I was supposed to meet my friends there. My friends didn't show up. So I went by the ledge of the river, and all of a sudden, I seen a duck fly by on a baby diaper. Zzz, his legs were up like this. He was chilling out. Another duck came by in a, a tire, a tire tube. The water was so disgusting, it's almost like you feel sorry for these ducks. So then I just walked on by. And then I seen a couple people, a couple guys fishing. What are they fishing for? They pull in the bass, or whatever they pull in, there was all oil on the fish, screws coming out of their mouth. So they throw it back. So I'm like, what do you fish for? Nah, it's just we like to fish. It's the game. So, okay. All of a sudden, I walk on my way, and all of a sudden, it's like I see these two guys hanging out, and they're down at the first step. Now, we have steps that lead into the river. Now, when you get the... At the first step, you're going to lead into mud, which goes into the river. It's like a swamp. 
Well, anyway, I'm watching these two guys. And the ducks come by by the first step, and they're by the first step. And these guys take out their vial, and they got a crack ball. So they put it in their pipe. They put it in their pipe, and they're smoking their crack. And they're laughing back and forth. And all of a sudden, the ducks come by, and you hear the ducks say, Quack, 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 quack. So these guys are looking at the ducks, and they're goofing on the ducks. And they take a couple hits of the crack, and they blow the smoke in the duck's face. And all of a sudden, the ducks are like, they're freaking out. They're going, quack, 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 quack. And all of a sudden, the guys are laughing. And then the ducks take off, and they fly away. So I look at these two guys, and all of a sudden, they just get up, and they walk away. So I'm waiting for my friends. My friends don't show up. About a week later, I says, oh, you know what? Let me go down the park. Let me see who's down by the park. So I go down by the park, and there's the dirty river, the whole nine yards again. And I see the two crackheads again. Now they're down at the first step. They're sitting there. And you know the ducks are going to come by. Because you can feed the ducks. In fact, they walk up the steps, the ducks, and they hang out. With some of the people. And then they just fly away. Well, anyway, I see the two crackhead guys. And they're down at the first step. And they take their vial out. And they got their crack ball. They got their pipe. They're ready to smoke it. And all of a sudden, they hear these sirens. And it's like, oh, man, it's the cops. Let's get out of here. So they dash off. So they take off. Meanwhile, I'm looking. I see the crack ball there. And I see the two ducks. The two ducks go up the first step. They see the crack, crack, they think it's bread. They stick it in their mouth and they're chewing on it. And all of a sudden you hear them say, quack, 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 quack. And they take off. I'm like, wow. So my friends come by, we're hanging out. I tell them the story, they're laughing. About a month goes by, I got nothing to do. I'm like, yeah, let me go down the park. She was hanging out down the park. So now I go down by the park. I don't see the two crackhead guys. But I look and I see the ducks hanging out. And the one freaking duck flies. And the other duck. And all of a sudden, out of nowhere, I see these two ducks coming. And they're by the first step. Okay. They got hats on backwards. Gold chains. And Air Jordan sneakers. And they're saying, crack, 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 crack. And all of a sudden, I look, I see another duck and the freaking duck shrimp. He was a freaking major. Crack, 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 crack. So the moral to the story is, if you smoke crack, don't go down by the Passaic County River. Because if you go down by the Passaic County River... You're going to see a whole squad of ducks doing. What the frick is that? This guy's nervous over here. No, I'm just enthusiasm. It's a enthusiasm. And you, you forgot my line there. Well, anyway, if you go down by the park and you see five, six ducks lined up and you see them do doing the crack walk. Quack, crack, 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 crack. It's like, wow, look at that duck. He's ready to take a dump. He's going to take a dump on you, James. You know what I think? I think if many years ago, if, if the late Soupy Sales uh, went over big with that ridiculous song and dance, called, uh, what I think it was called The Mouse. The Mouse. I think there's a lot of potential for the crack. This the, 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 the new dance. It could be a new crack. dance sensation the crack dance. by you. The crack dance. The crack. The crack dance. The crack dance. And being that you are the master of creative dance, you could really turn something into this. You know what? I I tried crack a couple times in the past. And you know what crack does to you? Makes the crack of your ass bigger. No, but it's almost like you're on one of them treadmills and you're like this. The crack dance. The crack dance. Crack. Well, it's concentrate. It's concentrated cocaine, crack. right? Crack. It's yeah. crack dance. It's like, dude, move forward. I can't. What? 
crack dance. Crack dance. Crack dance. Crack, 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 crack. I can't crack. move my body. Hey, could you move me? You know what? I got a strong feeling that this crack dance done by you will be a sensation. It will become. Who does this? Who does this? Can create introduces the crack dance. Uh, a new sensation. A newest sensation. A little Howard Cosell. The newest sensation can create. Introduces hey, the crack dance. When I was battling with my friend smoking, crack? Yeah, I only did it a couple times. But we got involved before that with the other drugs. Do I smoke angel dust? Oh, wow. I felt like a piece of starch. So it was almost like I was mechanical. Well, it is March, so you might as well be a piece of starch. So you really. I was you really. Mechanical. I was a mechanical man for the night. And it was like, hey, you know what? Don't step on the eggs. Don't crack the eggs. And you're walking like this. That's, a, that's the feel of it. Like you're walking on the moon. Now, what about LSD? Well, did you ever try that? No. I was on MSG. Oh, this Madison Square Garden production. Oh, that was, uh, I used to, yeah. Hey, that was when the old WWF uh, uh, monthly um, events were, were, were televised uh, back when the father ran it, uh, Vince McMahon Sr. But anyway, um, so you pretty much have uh, tried most of your popular recreational drugs in your life. Wow, listen to James. Recreational drugs. So what the heck does recreational drugs mean? I got to go to like... No prescription. I, I, I have to go to a recreational place to no, get my no, drugs? No, no, that means... Hey, well, let me ask the senior citizen in, in the studio. Wow, I seen you sit. Now you got senior citizens See, on crack. Yeah, no, no, no. They didn't crack. He, he came to watch the show. Hey, Charlie. Uh, what do you, uh, 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 what is your opinion of all this? Well, uh, let me tell you something. A recreational drug is when you don't have a prescription from your doctor. You, 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 you know what I mean? You, 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 you do it for the feel, for the feel. Why are you grabbing your crotch, Charlie, every time you say for the feel? Well, I'm trying to emphasize it. Uh, excuse me. I'm trying to emphasize it. You're doing it for the sensation, for the feel of it. Oh, the feel of it. Oh, what are you feeling? You, he sure loves that word feel, this Charlie. Hey, Charlie. You Is that from that song? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? So what it, what I'm trying what I'm trying to say is you don't need a doctor's prescription. It's unprescribed, which means you 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 it's illegal, and it, you, people buy it for the feel of it. You know what gets me, James? No, Charlie, go sit down. Relax. You know what gets me, James? Wow. You ever see the commercials? Okay, here's a good commercial you'll like. You ever see the commercials on funerals? They're depressing. I, I, they're in the, during the Not, day they yeah, play. They are, but they have a commercial. Life insurance companies. Well, they have them, but they have a commercial. All right. It's about cemetery plots. Mausoleums. All right. Yeah. And they said, you can get this beautiful spot in the mausoleum for $25,000. And your loved ones can be there in their coffin in the mausoleum. And they can see the beautiful sky. All right. And the beautiful sunrise coming up. Like, what are they going to see? They're dead. Like they're in the lap of luxury. Yeah, I hear you. Hey, you know what? When you're dead, it doesn't matter if they grind you into sausage meat. You know, it doesn't matter if they petrify you and turn you into a hat rack or a lamp for the living room. You're dead, you're dead. It doesn't matter if you have waterfront property in front of you, if there's a lake, if there's swans, if there's peacocks or whatever. It doesn't matter where you are. You're dead. The, 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 uh, the uh, marble or granite, and the location is for the living relatives so they can brag and say, oh, what a lovely plot. Oh, what a lovely location. You know what the, you know what the best funeral is? And it's, uh, it will be low cost. Shrink wrap, the same stuff 
the, the, the food industry uses to pack the cold cuts for the market, shrink wrap the bodies and plant them in vertically instead of horizontally. Plant them straight down so they take up a lot less land, a lot less real estate. Shrink wrap them and plant them straight down vertically. That is my solution. No, you know what my solution well, high cost is? Funerals. You know what my solution is with the funeral costs? What? It's like even with me. Yeah, I believe that when I die, I'm going to go to heaven because I took Christ as my Savior. Okay? So when I die, you can bury me in my backyard and throw freaking dirt. Because you know what? You dig that up three years later, you'll find my bones, but I ain't going to be there. All right? So my personal opinion, these people hit people over the head. 5,000, 10,000, 15,000. It's a scam. Okay? Of course it's a scam. I mean, going once. Uh, can I hear 5,000 over there? Uh, 2,000 2, over there. Oh, we got this great snow going over here for 4,000. Uh, this box over here costs 5,000. Now I hear 5,000 once. Oh, would you like that one over there that comes in marble? Would you like that one that comes in brown? I mean, come on, man. It's Look, like, wake up. Listen, they could cremate you and mix you into non dairy coffee creamer. Yeah, but that price put it is in going somebody's up coffee, and uh, you know, I mean, but that price is going up too. Cremation. People, well, people used to get cremated for a couple hundred dollars, and then it went up on the scale. Now people are saying, "Well, to bury my loved one, that cost me eight thousand dollars. I'll let them get cremated. Oh, that's up to fifteen hundred. You got that fifteen hundred over here? No, two thousand over well, here. Well, do they give you a big discount if it's not a loved one who dropped dead? Let's say it's somebody. Guy. Let's say somebody everybody hated. They couldn't stand the guy. The miserable bastard. I get through you. The discount you can have is in your pocket. <laughs> anyway, uh, would you like to? Whoa, whoa, wait, wait, like to... wait a minute. Who's this guy coming up? Who are you? Who's this guy? Hey, James. Who is this guy? What's your like, name? It looks like Where'd you come from. I'm the cover of Bob. Right? No. Nah, what's your name? Uh oh. I'm Masked Bob. Masked Bob? Yeah, Masked Bob. Wait a minute, wait a minute. This guy, Masked Bob, what do you come like in different disguises? Yes, I do. Because if I didn't, I wouldn't be Masked Bob. I'd just be Bob. Man, look at your haircut. It's standing straight up. You look like a hedge. Yeah. You want me to trim your hedge? No. I got the trimmer out. Let's see. Wow. So, what is your name? Mask Bob. What's the mask you're wearing? Oh, this is, I call it a bad boy mask. Bad boy? What do you watch? Cop? Bad boy, bad boy, bad boy, bad boy. What you gonna what do? You do when they come for you, bad boy? You watch that show? I used to. You don't watch it no more? Well, because I have other things to do now. Why will you do? Use the internet. Internet. Yeah, so what do you get in contact with on the internet? Oh, any, well, any chicks? No, I just any look ducks? at stuff. Any ducks? No ducks. Quack. No chicks? No chicks. So what do you listen? What do you watch? What do you watch on that thing? Oh. I, I play video games. Sometimes. Yeah, what video games do you like to play on that? Let's see, chess, scrabble, and what else? Uh, you sure you didn't grab the lady's chest the other day? No. Why not? Because I'm not that tight. I think he was whacking off. Hey, this is Shrimpy. Hey, there goes that guy again, man. No shrimpy, time. Shrimpy. This guy's back in the deal. Hey, you know what? Here's your freaking shrimp. It's a plastic ornament. Get the freak out of here. Get that thing out of here. You're going to let this guy manhandle me? Look at him, Bob. You see that thing over there? What is that, Bob? It's an ornament that goes on your car. Look at him. He's going to stick him now. Look. Look how nervous he is. Whoa! Whoa! I, I think he was whacking off on the internet. Wow. Look at that. You see how that sticks there? Yeah. You can move that thing anywhere. That's an ornament. You going to buy that off it? It's not an ornament. It's a real shrimp. Yeah, that's a real shrimper, right? And that's a real haircut, right, Bob? Right. Wow. Bob, let me see your eyes. What the freak kind of... Man, you look like you're from Star Trek. Yeah. Yeah. Look at your ears. What, do you got four ears? This yeah. guy's got four ears. Four ears. You're right. So what, are you an alien from Star Trek? 
think he's a genetic mutation. Could be. What do you mean, could be? It's either yes or it's no or in between. Yes, no, in between. Yes, no, in between. Yes, no, in between. Where are you? No. No. So what's no? I'm not a genetic mutation. Okay. And I have, what are you? I'm, I'm Bob and I have brown eyes. You have brown eyes. Yeah. So the bad boy mask, where did you get that from? Oh, I got it uh, from a costume shop in Wyckoff that oh, went yeah? out of business. What was it called? I forget the name of it. That's but, a good name. But these bad boy masks are rare. They're hard to get. How much that cost you? Ten dollars back in the early nineties. Wow, what do you think that cost now? Hundred dollars? I saw it on eBay for forty-three dollars. Forty-three dollars used. Now, if they're rare, how much do they cost? Well done. Very good question. This mask might be worth quite a lot of money. He he said, if they're here, how much do they cost? Well done. You should have came back. Well, let's turn it over and see. Like a piece of meat. Yeah. Oh, and as I dirty as your feet. I get it now. And do you know Pete? Yeah, I know Pete. Who's Pete? The one that gave me the mask that I wore before. Oh, you mean Petey Mobile? Yeah. Does he have the Petey Mobile no more? I have no idea. I don't think so. What's he got now? Blue eyes. Blue eyes? Yeah. Wait, if he has no Petey Mobile, that means he's got to be walking. Right. Where's he walked to? The deli on the street corner. Oh, so he's not um, walking. Yes, indeed, I'm talking about yeah. you and me. Not that walking? No. What? Where else is he walking? I guess over the railroad tracks. Really? Oh, yeah, that's right. He's got the dogs. Yeah. Where's he bring the dogs? I guess by the railroad tracks. And what do they do by the railroad tracks? They do their business. What business is that? You know what I mean. No, I don't know what you mean. One and two. And they got their own business? Yeah. What's their business? One and two. What's one and two? Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten? Just like I said, one and two. But what's one and two? If I want to be graphic, it's P and poo. P and poo. That rhymes. One and two is P, P and poo. and poop. So we got P, P. Which PP can go to poo poo. Right? Right. So the Pete you're talking about is a long time, well established stand up comic. Pete, yeah, Pete yeah, Dealer. Yeah, yeah, Pete yeah. Dealer. Well, let me nah, finish. Nah, let me finish. Nah, no, 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 no last names. Yeah, that's it. That's it. No last names. Why? Are you shy? Yeah, there's no last names here. We just name and that's it. We don't bring other people into the picture. Oh, okay. No, in other words, we don't plug. We don't plug. Okay. We don't use rotor. You use rotor rooter? No, I don't use rotor rooter. How come? When you go to the bathroom. Yeah. Where do you go to the bathroom? On the toilet. Okay. So what if you really backed up? What do you do? Call, call a plumber. Oh, Rotor Rooter, that's the name, and away goes trouble down the drain. Rotor Rooter. Wow. Okay, so let's see. Bad Boy. You know that show Cops? Yeah. All right. What? Why in that show do they call Bad Boys Bad Boys? Because that's just what they are, criminals. Oh, so they call them Bad Boys. Yeah. But this is Butch. That's not Butch. What's that? I call him Bad Boy. But isn't he from a cartoon? Yeah. The real name is... The real person of this mask is Guile the Street Fighter. Oh, wasn't that that guy that was like... Yeah. He looked like he was pumped up on steroids. Something like that. He looked yeah. like the Michelin Man. Yeah. You know, thinking about the Michelin Man, James, here in Lodi, they still have that Michelin Man all blown up like this? You know, that I have... Whitey? I think they took that... You know, I'm not sure. You mean the billboard? Yeah, the billboard. On Route 46. Yeah. You know when you know when you used to pump up your... Yeah, I saw that billboard. I liked it, too. Well, you gotta let me complete my joke here. Uh, you know when you had your your uh, five-speed bike? Yeah. You had to fill up your tire? Yeah. Okay, what'd you have to do? You had to get the... Pump. Pump to pump it up, right? Yeah. Well, I think with the Michelin, man, 
They pumped them up. They kept pumping them. They kept pumping them. They kept pumping them. And he, he looks like the Pillsbury. He just friggin' blew up. They had to put a string on him. And, Ew, he he looks like the Pil like a he, balloon. He looks like the Pillsbury Doughboy on steroids, the Michelin Man, to be honest. Yeah, and, he, and, and, and the way they had him, like the Pillsbury Doughboy, he's got his chef hat on. All right, and he's like this. He's he, a, and he's like, he's Tubby a, here. And when you push him, his stomach will go, ee, ee, and he go, ee, ee. he's a fat, he's a fat fuck. He's a fat bastard. Well, anyway, the one that was the billboard, yeah, okay, he had little rings around him. Do you notice the rings like on his leg? Yeah, those little, little rings, like, those like, like weights. Those are flabs, man. Flabs. Flabs of friggin' fat. Flabs of fat. And white, actually white dough, which makes people fat. But um. Yeah, but that. Yeah, you're right. I haven't seen that. You know. No. No. Uh, so. Uh, I don't know, man. This guy here. Bad boy. Yeah, I remember that cartoon. He had that hairdo. Yep. Right? He had that mask. Yeah. He had them ears. He had them eyes. Yeah. You know? Do you like that cartoon? I don't know if I like the cartoon or not, but I like the character Guile. Yeah? Yeah. Who else was in that? I forget, but a lot of similar people. Yeah, but didn't he have, like, something on his shirt or something? Huh? I'm not sure. Now, TV shows, growing up, you like TV shows, right? Yeah. Okay. Remember Superman? Yeah. Do you like Superman? So-so. I like the Superman that were in black and white. Yeah. But did you ever notice, James, you ever notice with the Superman episodes, black and white, or even colored, it was like, there's Clark Kent, and he's going to turn into Superman. So it's like, Every scene you see him turning into Superman in certain programs, he would run through the same alley. He would run into the same alley, or or, and then he would he would have the uh, Superman uh, uniform or costume under his clothing, under his suit and tie and everything. He would but, have he, to. but you would never see the bulge of his cape underneath his trousers. Like you could never tell his costume was underneath. Must have been pretty hot for him, actually, to wear that. It was underneath. And Clark Kent took off. Sometimes he did take off his glasses. But nobody, Superman. But nobody recognized Clark Kent as being Superman. All he had was those, those plastic black frame glasses on. Nobody recognized him. And you know what else was funny? When there was a girl around and he wanted to be nice, he'd take a, a hunk of coal, he'd crush it, in his hand under extreme pressure, and not only did a, a big diamond emerge for the for the lady, but it was already cut. Like it wasn't a diamond in a rough, it was perfectly cut, like a jeweler, a diamond cutter cut it. Yeah. And all, all that from a squeeze. I mean, you know, try to get the public to, to believe that. But, you know, we're talking about the old days when you had uh, B horror movies, low budget horror movies, and you know there wasn't a lot of. But but with Superman, there was two other things that used to get me. Another time, he would be in his office, and it's like, oh, I got to turn into Superman, so he would take off his clothes, and he fly out the window. Now you had a lady that came in who was a cleaner. Now, see, we see his pants there, his shirt there. How did he get his clothes? His shoes there. All right. His suit there, suit jacket, tie, hat there, glasses there. And when she came in to clean, she'd be like, hey, Mr. Kent, where are you? Hey, Mr. Kent, where are you? And she can't find Mr. Kent. Now she's with, when she thinks she said, wait a minute, where is this guy? Why is all his clothes here? But isn't it funny how all of uh, Superman or Clark Kent's clothes and eyeglasses all got back to Superman. He never lost his yeah, wallet. But you, gotta but you gotta realize one thing. Okay. He was Superman. So when he came back, all he had to do with his x-ray eyes is point to his outfit, his suit, <laughs> and then fly right on him. <laughs> and he's Ken again. Well, this is an assumption. You know, plus his shoes. How did his Superman boots fit 
in his dress shoes. How did no everything? And, and 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 he always got back everything: his underwear, his wallet, his, yeah, but you don't his get keys. It. You don't get it. He's Superman. Oh my God! Superman could do anything. These are all funny things that we. And then noticed. they found out that Superman was taking it in the can. <laughs> Well, now Superman is fighting Batman, which I don't understand. There's another one, Batman. Do you like Batman? So-so. So-so? Yeah. Why? You didn't like Batman? I liked his mask. Yeah? You liked his mask? I like his, his, his dark purple. I like everything. I like that color. I like that dark blackish purple uh, uh, mask and, and the cape, everything. The car, everything was the same color. I like... Uh, I like the back cave. Well, see, he was another guy. Very cozy. Very he was cozy. another guy the back that Commissioner Gordon would call him and he'd say to him when he was Bruce Wayne, his sidekick was his nephew, right? So what was his sidekick's name? You know Rob. Name? Robin. Not Robin. When he was... What, uh, Dick Grayson. Dick. All right, yes, Commissioner. Okay. They, they're the Batcave. And then you see him go down the pole. Now they're Batman and Robin. They get in the car. And they go to Commissioner, the Commissioner's office. But they never did anything. Now they go to Commissioner's office and they give a clue. Now remember, he's Batman. Batman knows everything. So now they're trying to analyze something. Actually, Alfred, the Alfred is the one that researches everything. For so him. he the grabs problem. the paper and he's looking. So they're giving their point of view, and Batman's like, he's a computer. No, what I think is, uh, he's putting it all together. And then Robin would say, holy cow, Batman, you're absolutely right. Now, what I want to know is, what the hell did Chief O'Hara and Commissioner Gordon do? What were they getting paid for in Gotham City? They called Batman for everything. It's like you don't need a police department in Gotham City because they're always bothering well, Batman. In Gotham City, you need a police department because you have Batman. And right, the so Daily Planet, you didn't need a police department because you had Superman. Right, so that's why you just saw Chief O'Hara and uh, Commissioner Gordon. They didn't really do anything. They just kept on bothering Batman for every little thing. Mm. Hey, Mass Bob, mm. did, you get, mm. did you get around to remodeling that garbage can you live in? Not yet. Uh, well, I think you. Uh, what are you gonna? You can't. You don't have to get aluminum siding because it's already aluminum, probably, right? Yeah. Yeah. Hey. Okay, yeah, Bob. All right, Bob. Well, we gotta move on here because we got another thing that's gonna kick in. So, say good night to the audience, Bob. Good night. Night. Sleep tight. Don't let the bed bugs bite. And that's oh, no. Greetings, everyone. I'm back. James P. Madonna. And I'm here with my cousin, the one and only professional prize fighter, Roscoe. Roscoe, how you doing? Oh, well, I'm doing, yeah. Oh, what? All right, no, the, no, the match hasn't started yet. Now, Roscoe, you're not oh, obviously you're not Roscoe P. Coltrane from the Dukes of Hazard. You're Roscoe, my cousin, the the prize fighter, and uh, uh, they call you uh, uh, what, a punch drunk or something. Oh my God, God, God! Oh, you're not really punch drunk. Oh, I, I see. I can understand my cousin Roscoe, but other people might have a problem. Now, Roscoe, you, you had a long career, uh, um, very, very well experienced in the ring, uh, excuse me, in the ring. <laughs> now, uh, is it true that... Hey, 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 I'm just a boy back there. No, you calm down. Right, okay, no problem, no problem. Now... Is it true you had you actually had a fight with Mike Tyson? No, 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 I fought with him. Now you had a, you sparred with him, or you had a a, a, a uh, actual uh, booked uh, uh, televised uh, fight? What was it? Uh, you did both. Oh, yeah, I fought him. Well, Roscoe, you look great. You never look better in your life. You know, I mean, uh, hey. 
Um, when was the last time you got a haircut, man? Oh, what are you doing, man? No, I ain't done. Oh. He always had that curly hair, you know? I mean, um, we always wondered why, you know, he had the curly black hair in our family, being that most of us had straight or wavy light hair, but he came out this way. I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, uh, maybe it's because when he was a child, he stuck his finger in a light socket. That could be it. Well, I think, you know. Yeah, yeah. Hey, now, I like the the, the, the job the plastic surgeon did on your nose. The, no, no, no. the nose job is excellent. Folks, didn't he do a great job? I mean, really, I think they did a great job on your nose. Yeah, now turn sideways. Uh, 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 yeah, this way towards me. Now, uh, uh, that's a great profile. Profile. Profile, I'm sorry. They did a great nose job. They call it rhinoplasty. You know, it, it, it's kind of offensive to call name it, name it after a rhinoceros, you know. I mean, if somebody needs a nose job. But I think they did a... Uh, the guy is... Uh, he wasn't board certified, a plastic surgeon. He was broad certified. He had a lot of girlfriends. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Some... Uh, 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 Undercover Bob, which just thought it was real funny. Oh, not the best, I mean. But he didn't laugh. He didn't laugh. We haven't heard you laugh all day. He has a very unique laugh. But anyway, um, cousin uh, Roscoe, do you have any any advice for uh, young athletes out there that want to take up a, a, a professional prize fighting career? Yeah, he's not a you you do you do personal training no, too, right? Man, come on. You do personal training, right? You yeah. you're a trainer. I don't know if they'll understand what the fuck you're saying, but you know, I think you'll do a good job training them, you know? Hey, hey, hey. Train come them on, you're not like that. Come on. <laughs> I'll knock your ass out, man. You, you he's pushing a guy with a with a black thorn shillelagh in his hand. Not that I need not that I need the shillelagh, but Anyway, it helps me emphasize it. So, Roscoe, uh, uh, is your, are your fees expensive at your boxing gym to train your yeah, people? Two hundred five dollars, man. Two hundred what? Two hundred and fifty dollars. Got the daddies in your ears. Would you say again? How much is it? Twenty-five. What? Twenty-five. Twenty-five dollars. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Okay. All right. Whatever. His, his fees are reasonable. You can see by the looks of him that he knows what he's doing. He's very well experienced, Roscoe. And uh, I, your training food now, is it? would it be like uh, 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 cannolis? Yeah, you get your strength from cannolis? Yeah. Oh, cannolis? And uh, what about uh, any special? I heard you have a very special high-protein uh, vitamin-packed uh, pizza recipe for athletes. Yeah, that's mine. Yeah, your own special formula. You got to try it. You're actually, uh, he uh, he wanted to take the best training food and nutrition and put it into a, a way that kids would enjoy eating it. And he created this pizza. Um, um, it's called the, uh, the pie-eyed pizza. Oh, nice. <laughs> Yeah, as in, not as in pie-eyed punch drunk. No, 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 pie-eyed. Pie-eyed, pie uh, pie uh, the, the sailor man. You know, remember him? I know, Bob-Bye. Why are you talking on Bob-Bye? Pie-eyed pizza. Roscoe's special pie-eyed pizza. But, uh, Roscoe, you have many great years ahead of you, and good luck. With your boxing school training all these kids, because you are truly, by the looks of you, it shows that you are the guiding light for America's youth, and you should you should be the president of the um, uh, what is that organization called? Uh, <clears throat> uh, hey, that, you that, that, no, 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 you should be the head of the president's. Hey. Uh, uh, you keep on interrupting me, man. You should be the president. You should be the head of the president's council for physical fitness. Oh, you talking about my right now? You know what, Roscoe? I think we're done.
Take care, everyone. Oh, no, we'll see you next time. Roscoe, say goodbye to everybody. Oh, yeah. What was that again? What'd you say? I don't know what the fuck this guy said.